everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Becca and I'm so excited to be hanging out with you today because we're doing some plant chores. Hello, Potted Together fam. Today, I thought I would just show you a little bit of the plant chores that I do um, sporadically. Hey guys, Nicole here. I have some plant chores to do that I have been putting off for quite some time. Thought I'd take you along with me. If you have listened to our episode on plant chores on the Potted Together podcast, you will know that like I don't have a system or at least not a refined system for doing plant chores. I basically just do it sporadically. I'll walk around, I'll look at my plants, I'll see what needs help and then I'll just tackle what I can in a day or for a time period that I have. And first, I want to go to the shelf that's above my shower in my bathroom and take care of some of the plants up there because they don't get that much attention because it's kind of not easy to get them down. So that's what we're going to do today and then take care of a few other plants and just kind of show you what I do when I flush and re-add nutrient solution into my LECA plant. All right, so I have my Raphidophora tetrasperma here. She ain't looking that good. Despite the fact that she's popping out new growth, I'm at, there you go. right up top there, she's popping out a new growth point. There has been a new leaf that just came in that is a very pitiful excuse for a leaf, might I add. These little tiny baby leaves, I'm like, what is happening? here. Can you just, can you just put out some bigger leaves? I actually got this plant from Becca and when she gave it to me it was beautiful. It had these beautiful, perfectly shaped, perfectly sized mini monstera leaves and now she's just sad. I have this in Lekka. I think I have two pieces in here. I am going to check the roots and see what we have going on because if I could guess there's some root rot happening down there. Um, I actually wrote on here, oh yeah there are two cutting in here. One I got from her on March 14th and the other one I got from her on um, July 18th of this year. She shipped it to me. I like to write down when I pot plants up just so I kind of know like when I got them and I usually take pictures of my plants when I get them so I can compare like how far they've grown. Every plant chore day usually starts with watering so basically i go around and i look at my plants and i see who looks droopy who looks curly because normally i wait until around that point to water my plants but there are some like my queen here i'll just come up and feel her leaf because she just has one and i'll see how it feels so to me this looks like and feels like it needs water so I take it over to the handy dandy sink. So I do have some other plants in here right now, which I will show you. We've got quite the, the bath going on and it's very, very nice. So here, here's the current situation in the sink. So these guys were all very thirsty and clearly this one too, you see all that curl action? But I wiped off the leaves on this one because they were looking very dusty. This is terrible lighting, I'm so sorry. But I'm very happy that the sun is finally out for once. So I'm gonna go with it. But yeah, really cute leaves. I wash them and basically what I do is I put the water to be like warm, not cold, and then use a little hose and make sure that they get properly saturated. Okay, so we are currently in my bathroom and from my plant tours, you'll know that I have a shelf up here that has a bunch of plants on it. So that is what I'm gonna be tackling today. What I'm gonna do now is get up there and take the plants down that need water, that need attention. So I'm gonna grab the camera and I will show you what's up there. Okay, so up here we have my Monstera Thai Constellation, which is just doing the most. And then we have this beautiful Philodendron Billetier that honestly is just loving life. I know that some of these leaves have stretched out. I mean, but look how big that leaf is. I can't even get it in the camera. Over here is my Alocasia fry deck that, ugh, honestly, like I let go way too long without watering. It did just start putting out a new leaf. So that makes me happy. Those two were mature. That one's a little bit wonky. 
um, but that one seems to be doing okay. This plant is in soil. This plant is in LECA. This plant is in LECA. And then over here, I have a couple of my low light plants. So I have a ZZ plant and then two Sansevieria cylindricas that are in soil as well. So I'm gonna take those three down because I know that they need water. And I've checked this one, it's okay. I just took care of this Billy Etier, so I know that this one's okay. And I just watered my Thai constellation. So that one is definitely okay. For now, I'm just gonna grab those three and I'm just gonna move them right down into the shower. Okay, let's take off our plant braces. I use these Velcro strips to kind of strap my plants to the moss pole here. Now my guess is also that this moss pole is gonna be rotted because, oh, oh, you fell down. Because uh, it's in LECA and it's a wooden stake. Guys, I have to get different trellis for my plants. I actually have one I'm gonna use today. Yeah, see. It's not good. All right, let's pull this out of here. Yeah, see there should be more roots showing than just this little bit. Sorry. All right, a little loud. Yeah, as I expected. So this piece is root rot. Look at that. Oh no, the roots just came right off. And it's got a new growth point, isn't that crazy? It's like the plant somehow was taking up the solution and still growing, still trying to fight, but it wouldn't have made it. I'm really glad I got it out of there when I did because there's like, there's no root left. Like this is what came off of there. Anywho, what I think I'm gonna do here is I need to root this up. So I think I'm gonna do it in water. I think I may chop off this bottom leaf which is a sad thing, but it looks like that may be the healthiest node. These don't look that great. Well, these were the two that were, that had the rotted roots on them. So I think I'm going to chop it right here, cut this leaf off and see if I could get this rooted up in some water over the next couple weeks. She's still cute. She's just not happy. Now, typically besides watering, what I usually do is some rearranging. I have an idea of what I want to do. So I have a wood rack right here, which is so close to my plants and I don't necessarily like that. And there's been a lot of people that have been telling me to be careful about that because, you know, bugs and stuff lives in that wood most likely. So what I want to do is put it instead right here and I can just move this elsewhere. And I also am going to be introducing grow lights into the space. Not necessarily this room, but just in my house. So if I need to, I could move them. But this room in general is just a disaster because I brought in obviously my gigantic tree plant and I need to put things elsewhere. So. Um, I'm going to expose myself really quickly and show you that, well, not expose myself, but like expose myself for wearing business on top, pajamas on bottom because of that work from home life. We love it. So I know on the episode that I said, whenever I water my soil plants, I usually take them to a bathtub or a sink. It's just how I've always done it. Yeah, it's just, I take the head off and just spray it down like it's raining. And you know, to be honest, the plants seem to like it. So I'm gonna continue to do that. Okay, let's look at this other piece here. Now this is the piece she sent me in July. These roots look good. Like the LECA is still gripping on there pretty, pretty nicely. And these are some white roots. So this is happy. I'm just not quite sure why it's giving me these tiny leaves, like super tiny. Maybe it just needs more light. I do have it in my, my living room. Oh, it's not getting that much light. It's not getting as much light as it should be getting. So she's healthy. I think what I'm gonna do is get a smaller pot, pot this back up in LECA, because why put her through stress? And put it in a window. I lost 
a little bit of roots in that transaction there because they grew through the net pot. One of the downfalls of having LECA is sometimes the roots grow through the net pot bottoms and they're very thin and they break, unfortunately. Let me go get my other pot. I have a smaller pot as opposed to this one. And same concept, same type of net pot. That needs to be washed a little bit. Pardon me. It's just sometimes the pots get a um, calcium buildup from the salts in your water and you have to rinse it out. All right, so those are all watered. Now I'm going to mix up some nutrient solution for my plants that are in LECA and go through and show you what I usually do on a bi-weekly basis with my LECA plants when I need to flush their medium and then re-add nutrient water. So let's go flush some LECA. Okay, so here we are in my normal filming location. I just wanted to show you a little bit of how I keep my nutrient solution, how I mix it up. And to start, I have this jug of water. To be honest, I bought this water not to drink, but just for the jug so I could reuse it for my uh, nutrient solution. But I have this jug and a funnel. And the reason I have that is because over here, you can see this spout that I have on this five gallon jug of purified water. When I started doing LECA, I knew that I wanted to use purified water because the water here in Arizona is really, really hard. Every two weeks, there is a company called Sparklets that drops off five gallon jugs of water. They take the old ones that we've used. I also use this for my drinking water here, but I bought this little spout off of Amazon. It's battery powered. And that is what I use to fill up my nutrient water because it's just a lot easier. You just click a button here and Okay, so now that my jug of water is filled, I am going to go ahead and mix up my nutrient solution. And I keep this cart right next to all of my plants. I got this at Michael's, I think, but this is where I store the jugs of nutrient solution, the nutrient solution itself and fertilizers, etc. And just, it's just all plant stuff. And I just keep it in this handy little roller cart here. Okay, shoot, I had a phone call and I forgot that I was recording this video. Okay, so I've moved the wood rack and then I moved this little plant stand to right there. I feel like it's all right. It looks okay. I mean, maybe a little crowded, but the wood rack will only be in here in the winter time. And if I don't put this little stand here over there, it leaves a lot of room for me to put big plants over here. So as you can see, I have this little open space next to the goddess of my life. And I'm going to just put my big monstera there in place. Oh, like that. So I have my little wick here. I'm just gonna feed it through the bottom. These are nice because it has spots for a cotton wick. You could buy these by the roll. I think Adam has them in his Amazon store. So just go click on his channel and you can get those if you want. But it's like a big spool of cotton uh, rope and you can just cut it to size. LECA is reusable, which is very nice. So I pretty much rinsed all this LECA off off camera and I am reusing it just to pot it up in a new pot. I don't think this is gonna need any plant braces. Not yet, anyway. I probably should give it something, but I don't think it needs it just yet. Um, well, maybe it does. Look, hold on, I'm gonna get one. I got this beautiful copper trellis from Plant Theology. She's on Etsy and Instagram. And this is nice because I can actually stick this straight through the bottom of the net pot, like on either side. You know, those holes that had the wick cord? You can do it. Go. and it'll stand up for me well a little bit anyway once I get the rest of the LECA in there it should be a little bit more stable right on in there and then we're gonna top it off with some more LECA look at that how beautiful is that okay you're gonna be happy you gonna miss your friend he's in rehab he had a problem now that I have my gallon jug of water filled to the top I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing my nutrient solution and I did a video on my channel explaining what I do and how I feed my plants that are in semi-hydroponic, passive hydroponics. 
Um, so check that out if you would like to know what I use and how I do it. So I'll probably just do a time lapse here just so I don't have to bore you with all of the details. All right, so we have the nutrient solution all mixed up and the last step that I do with this process is just test the pH. And it's very, it's a very important step and it's a step that a lot of people tend to ignore or think that it isn't important, but it is very important because plants will only uptake nutrients within a certain pH range. I always shoot for the pH to be around five, so that color of orange and that looks like where we are is it a very different day from the last day i filmed for this absolutely uh just ignore that you can see there's just like plants on the floor and our chair here so the chair usually goes like in this corner like right here herself I am going to just stick her in a mason jar uh, I'm gonna cut out just the bottom two nodes instead of the bottom three maybe this one will push a root through bottom two nodes submerged okay I have my beautiful Hoya Rebecca that I just got from Adam not that long ago in the mail look at what she's doing. I'm so excited for those two blooms and I recently got her to root up nicely. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into some um, LECA but I'm not going to introduce it to any nutrients just yet because it's still in transition. It's still rooting up but I think it'll benefit from going into some LECA. So I have a tiny pot here. I got this pot from the thrift store and a net pot I think this is a three inch, fits perfectly in there with the space for a little water reservoir at the bottom. So I don't know if you're stressed or if you're happy. Pop that girl in there. It's a technique. I kind of like hold the plant as I fill. It's sometimes it's hard to pot, to pot up plants that are top heavy and you top heavy girl. It's okay. Oh, how adorable is that? I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm gonna sit this over on the ledge of my plant shelf. Okay, it's a little backlit here, but look at this beautiful babe. And she's just hanging over the edge. Okay, so the next thing I do is I just kind of go around and look at what plants need some attention. And I know for sure that this Hoya needs attention because when I bend these leaves, they're easily bendable. And you can kind of see they're a little wrinkly. So this one definitely needs some water. Down here I have my Peperomia elongata. And it's just doing the most. For the longest time I thought this plant was going to die. Because that's what the leaves look like that was originally on the plant. But it has since grown these two leaves. And you can see it's putting off another one right there. But that one needs some attention because I can tell 
by squeezing the leaves. Now for my plants that are in LECA, I usually bring them to the sink because sometimes you will see on the top of your LECA salts and minerals build up and every once in a while they need to be flushed. I try to do it with my plants every couple of weeks. I'm not always the best at that, but what I usually do is I bring them to the sink, I'll pull it out of its cash po, I'll rinse out the cash po, flush through the LECA, and then I will re-add nutrients back into the cash po, and that's it. I have a feeling I'm gonna go over my time limit on this video. Sorry, Becca, because Becca's the editor. This is my Monstera Peru that I got from Adam. <laughs> I didn't intentionally only pick plants I got from Becca and Adam for this video. It just kind of happened that way. I get a lot of plants from them. That is just ridiculously prehistoric. I just posted a picture of this on my Instagram page. I'm going to take this out because I don't know now if... Oh yeah, look at that root. Look at that. I think that this might be too big of a pot, but it's doing pretty good in there. So I might keep it. I might keep it in there. We'll see. We're going to take a look at these roots and see what's going on. A little loud. So, uh, this is why it's doing well in that pot. These roots are so healthy. Oh my gosh, there's no rotted roots on here. Does not need a pole just yet. I think it's happy like it is. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this new leaf though, you guys, like wow. All right, you guys, the room has been cleaned. The pups are joining us. I hope that you enjoyed this little section of plant chores from my jungle room. Wow, it looks like a big jungle with that huge Avonsonia tree. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. That is my plant chore routine. Not, It's not really a routine, but that's what I do to take care of my plants and multiply that by 100. And that's my whole day. Well, thanks so much, guys, for watching this video with us. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out the podcast on any podcast player that you have. We'll see you in the next collab video. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.